Yo, what's up guys, it's CJ here, back with another Back for Blood build. This build is the LMG build as uh, requested. It was requested by a viewer of the channel who really enjoyed the Back for Blood uh, bullet hose build. So we wanted a LMG build, but one that's actually kind of a little less meme and is not going to just rinse through your ammo. So here it is. Um, this is the kind of build we've been working on the last week. As you saw in the intro video, it's really, really useful for taking down lots of Ridden and also for, for dealing with those bosses in the weak spots. Now, uh, things just to note with this, I have done two builds. Um, so I will go over like a, the, the different cards. So please, uh, please stay tuned for that because there are two cards within the build that I used in the trailer um, that I have swapped out and tried and it's mainly some copper cards that they do work and you can use them and it just makes you a little bit better for like online play but if you're like me and you play offline mostly then you know stick with the the original build and don't don't substitute any of the cards as usual guys we are going to go through that in the normal format and I'll go over the substitute cards at the end. I do also want to cover off a technique that I've been using since back in the days of Call of Duty World at War and it might just help you. I don't know if you will already know about it or whether it's something that's super common knowledge and I'm just teaching you guys to suck eggs. It's a British term of expression. Anyway, so if you do enjoy it and you do like this technique and it's something that you feel adds something to, to the game and you would kind of like to know some more techniques and things like that, please let me know and I will see if I can throw some more techniques in there that I use to help me with the no-hope difficulties. Anyway guys, without further ado, let's get on into the build. So the first set of five cards are as follows. So the first one, Tactical Vest. Then Large Caliber Rounds, Shredder, Belligerent, and Film Full of Lead. So Tactical Vest is a bit of a, a, bit of a no brainer. It's uh, super simple. It's just gonna increase your rifle ammo capacity and give you 10% increased damage with assault rifles and LMGs. Now I will just add a note here, you can use either. So if you don't like LMGs, you can use assault rifles instead. I personally wouldn't recommend it. I would say that stick with the LMGs because there's not really much reload speed in this build. And that that with the assault rifles, the, the amount of times you're gonna be reloading, it just doesn't, doesn't really add up um, as to why you would use it. Anyway, second card, large caliber rounds. That's gonna give you 7.5% bullet damage. You've seen it in, in a lot of builds before and it's gonna give you 200% bullet penetration and that just helps for mowing down plenty of ridden that are running at you in straight lines or even if there's lots of them in uh, kind of groups, your bullets are gonna go through them and hit multiple ridden. Then we have Shredder. Now this one is purely for those big bulky mutations. All this is gonna do is it's gonna apply a stacking damage increase up to 15% for three seconds. So at the max stack, so when you shoot 15 times into the same enemy, let's say the ogre as an example, it's gonna take 15% increased damage. Now, what that means is your damage side of things and your teammates damage side of things are gonna hit harder by 15% than it normally would do. Then we have belligerent, now Belligerent, this is primarily just because we're running this build on No Hope and the hordes are constant. Like every couple of minutes, you're gonna get a horde. Every time they send more, they just take more damage, right? So this is gonna give you a stacking 4% increase to your damage each time a horde is called and that's up to six stacks. Now at its max, that's gonna give you 24% increase of damage and that's until a cleaner is incapacitated or killed. Now, just be aware that if you are playing No Hope with a friend and they go down, this is gonna wipe out your belligerent stacks and generically, you're gonna wanna play No Hope a little bit more uh, tactically, a little bit more reserved. 
Then the final card, Film Full of Lead. We saw this in the Bullet Hose build and it's just too good a card not to keep in the actual LMG build. And what this is going to do is while you're shooting, so under consistent fire, you can gain up to 20 stacks of this buff, which is 1% damage each time, 1% fire rate, 5% swap speed, and that's going to apply every 0.25 seconds of continuous fire. So basically, in two and a half seconds, you're going to have 10, 10 stacks. And in five seconds, if you can continue to fire consistently for five seconds before the stacks deteriorate, you're going to gain 20 stacks. What that means is you're going to gain 20% damage, 20% fire rate, and a massive 100% swap speed. Now the swap speed is not huge here because generically your sidearm won't be used all that much, but it does really help if you are in a bit of a pickle and you do need to swap to that, that you know, magnum or maybe you've got a, a sidearm shotgun, whatever that looks like, um, just to kind of clear the ridden that's in your face if that's uh, something that's happening. That's the first set of five cards. Let's have a look at the second set of five. So the first card being Silver Bullets, then Confident Killer, Line Em Up, Optics Enthusiast, and Reckless Strategy. Now, Silver Bullets, we've seen it before. Again, it's going to be really basic. It's just 10% bullet damage increase and 15% effective bullet range for some longer range shots. Confident Killer is, again, another stacking damage bonus. So you have all of the other bonuses that you already have. And then this is going to be until the end of the level. Every time your team kills a mutation, whether that be you or your teammates, you're going to gain 1% damage up to 15%. Now that's great because even if you're not killing the mutations, your teammates kill them, you're still going to gain the stacking bonus and it's until the end of the level. So you'll gain 15% as long as you kill all of those mutations. Then we have Line Em Up. Now Line Em Up has a lot of buffs, so it's 10% effective bullet range, 15% recoil, recoil control, 25% bullet penetration, 25% aim speed. All of these are really, really good just to give you that little bit of fluidity when it comes to handling your weapon. Then we've got Optics Enthusiast. Now this is just so that your bullets go exactly where you're aiming them, whether you be aim down sights or hip firing. And then finally, Reckless Strategy. Now this one is for that weak spot damage and just so that you can absolutely hammer it home with those mutations. Whenever you see them and you see the big re red weak spot, you just aim for that and you will shred them. One thing just to point out as well, with Reckless Strategy, it is a 5% damage resistance debuff, but we are going to counter that with a later on card. And that is the second full set of cards. Let's move on to the third and final set. So the first card of the third set is Cross Trainers, then Breakout, Ridden Slayer, Ammo Belt, and then finally Motorcycle Jacket. So Cross Trainers is a 20% stamina buff, 20% stamina regen buff, 3% move speed and 5 health and this is just going to give you a little bit more mobility because you are going to be a slightly slower considering you're carrying an LMG. Then we have Breakout. Now Breakout is a really good card. It's used primarily for if you're not using Evangelo um, and yes it is a card that can be swapped out if you would like it to. Um, I have put it in because I play offline most of the time and it just helps me instead of relying on the AI to kind of save my booty, I can just break out of any kind of grab and carry on as I was. Then we have Ridden Slayer. Ridden Slayer is for the increased of, uh, increase of 20%. Then we have Ridden Slayer. This is for the 20% weak spot damage increase 
and that's just to stack with the reckless stat strategy which means we're going to do 50 percent and all of our other stacking damage buffs all to the weak spot and to the the enemy that we're shooting at then we have ammo belt now ammo belt is for the extra ammo capacity which is 50 percent which is pretty huge and 15% reload speed. Now again, with regards to reload speed, we are gonna talk about a tech that's used for specifically reload speed, and we'll come on to that in just a couple of minutes. Then we finally got motorcycle jacket, and this is to counteract the downsides of the reckless strategy and give us a bit of health. Um, generically, it's a good, good card just to take the edge off, this could be swapped out as well for something like scar tissue or something with a bit more damage resistance but maybe some other bad benefits etc like wooden armor where you've got fire resistance debuff etc all right guys so the two cards that we were talking about substituting previously are cross trainers and breakout now the reason why these two is because you don't really need the mobility you can use it but it's not necessarily and also breakout because if you are playing online with your friends then hopefully they will come and save you so the two cards i replaced these with were bounty hunter and lucky pennies now the reason why i replaced it with these two is because we're already gaining stacking damage on mutation kills we kind of want to tie the the money aspect of it in with that so bounty hunter is going to mean that when you or your team kills a mutation similar to our damage buff that we're going to get we're going to gain 10 copper up to a total of 300 per level and then additionally lucky pennies so all this is is when you or your team loots copper you have a 35 percent chance to find a hundred percent additional copper so all that means is instead of picking up 25, you pick up 100. Wonderful. So these are the two I replaced it with. There are so many money cards, guys. And generically, like there's too many to kind of go over. Um, so you have, you know, the Copper Scavenger, you have Hazard Pay, um, you have Compound Interest, you have Money Grubbers, all of which you can kind of, you know, swap it in and out with. Generically, I would say to roll with the ones that stack and ones that rely on you or your team. But there's so, so many um, that you could use to, to kind of your benefit and your team's benefit. So you could go with something like Share the Wealth, where each teammate gains 100 bonus copper at the start of each level. Or you could even go with compound interest, which means each cleaner gains 5% of their total copper in a safe room. It, the, the possibilities are really pretty endless. You could, you could go for quite a lot of um, different kind of combinations, but the, the ones I went with are the, the Bounty Hunter and Lucky Pennies. So there's only two LMGs in the game, the M249 and the RPK. Now, I personally would usually run this on the M249 just because of the stacking buff we get from Film Full of Lead. Because it has that box mag and especially with extended magazines, etc., you'll be able to fire for a longer period of time. However, I will state that the RPK is also a really viable option. It's super, super good and does a bit more damage than the M249 but has roughly half the, the standard magazine capacity. So the M249 at base has 80 bullets, the RPK has 40. Okay, so I know a lot of you will be thinking about this tech that we were talking about with regards to weapons. Now, personally, I came across this technique in Call of Duty World of War, and that was primarily because all of the guns took a long time to reload. So if you already know about this tech, feel free to skip on in the video to where we go of the cleaners and things like that that we can use. If you don't know about the tech, pay attention closely because it can really save you and it's not just back for blood that it can help you in. There's a lot of video games out there that have a similar kind of system to the reload animations and things like that. Now this technique is called an animation cancel. 
So let's have a look at the M249, which we have here with the lovely Cupcake Carnage skin. I, I would say Cupcake Carnage is probably one of my favorites just because it looks so insane, I would say. Um, tell me down in the comments, what's your, what's your favorite skin in, in Bag for Blood? I really like the, uh, the Cupcake Carnage, especially on, on like the Barrett 50 Cal, where it just looks super cool. But anyway, the technique. So, we're gonna fire off some rounds here. Okay, now we need to reload. So this is the normal reload animation. Take the bag off, put the mag on, drop the thing, and pull down the handle. Now, that's a long animation. That takes a while, right? So, if you notice down in the bottom right hand corner where we have our ammo count, when we're reloading, the ammo count is actually updated sooner than the animation finishes. So we reload and I put the bullets on top and then the bullet count is updated, right? So if I fire again and then I hit the reload and then right here, I swap weapons. So all I did there is in our options and our mouse and keyboard settings, there is a quick switch button, which is right here. The weapon quick swap button. Now this by default will be your X key. So I've rebound mine to Q and I've rebound my ping to middle mouse click. And all we do is we tap Q twice really fast. So that puts our gun away and brings it back out again. Now, what that actually does is it saves us a good amount of time on the reload because we just flick off the, bag, the box mag, we put on a new one, switch, switch, done. There's our reload done. We don't have to go through the top piece being dropped back down and we don't have to go through uh, the round being chambered on the side either because we just skip that entire part of the animation. So the RPK, if we fire a few rounds and then hit reload, you can see we chamber the round and that's the animation complete. It's a lot shorter than the M249. But if we animation skip it right here, we can skip that entire segment where we have to switch the, the gun over and pull the handle back. Now. One thing I will say is you do need to be a little bit careful when using this technique because you can just kind of accidentally do it a bit too soon. So what happens is instead of you actually skipping the animation, you don't, you don't actually skip anything and you cancel your reload animation completely. But if you're careful about it and you notice and you watch the numbers in the bottom right corner instead of the animation, you can time it pretty much perfectly every single time. So let me know if this technique kind of helped you, if it, um, you know, is applicable to you. And re really, it can be used in a lot of video games. The games that I've seen it most applicable in, though, is games where there is first person tactics and LMGs because generically the LMGs will have the long, full, drawn out animation, and that's something you can skip. I found it personally really helpful in Killing Floor 2, all of the Call of Duties, etc., etc. But let me know what you think, and let's get back to the cleaners. So let's go over the cleaners that you can use this build with. So the first person I would recommend using this build with is Heng. And this is because Heng starts with the RPK LMG. Nobody else starts with an LMG and you can't get the M249 as a guaranteed drop. It's just by chance. Now, one thing I will say is that if you do have a couple of thousand supply point cards um, kind of sitting in your back pocket like I have, then you can just buy burn cards. Now, burn cards are a one-time use card, and this does open up the possibilities of who you can use. And this LMG build can literally be used with any character. So far, I've played through the first couple of levels on No Hope difficulty with Evangelo, Walker, Holly, and Heng. I've, I've done it with those four specifically. The reason why for Walker and Holly is because of the increased damage, 
and Holly is because of the health that you gain back from Killing Ridden. Evangelo I tried it with to kind of mess with the deck a little bit and see what cards I could substitute and things like that. But I found that even if you substitute the cards on other cleaners, it doesn't really matter. So you can you can kind of swap that swap and choose as you wish. Now, I personally really love Holly. She's just probably my favorite character, so I would generically run it with her. But Walker, you gain the 10% increase of damage, and you also can ping uh, the mutations to give your your teammates extra damage against them. And also hang because he just starts with an RPK it means you don't have to use any burn cards or anything like that okay and that is it for the build so we've gone through all of the cards we've gone through the super secret ninja skill technique for reloading and we've covered off the cleaners that you can use for this build and generically any cleaner can be it's really really cool build I really enjoy playing this build and uh, my wife who also plays back for blood and other first person shooters this build is going over to her and it's going to be probably her main build that she runs going into lmgs because she likes just absolutely slamming bullets down range but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this build i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed making it for you guys as well because it was one it's the kind of the first build that was requested i suppose where somebody said yo what about an lmg build or i know that some of you guys previously in the first in the in the way way back in the first ever uh, kind of melee build that I've um, I've done I've got massive feedback from it and honestly I just I can't thank you guys enough but uh, one of the comments really stands out which was um, about you know seeing what I do with kind of like a Legolas or Archer build and we did that one as well but it wasn't necessarily uh, requested but more like can you can you see what we can do or I'm kind of anticipating it so yeah this was this was probably the first build that we've actually been requested to so thank you guys for requesting it if there are any other builds that you do think hmm that that could be cool but I don't really know how to work just let me know and we'll we'll have a look at kind of seeing if we can do another video on that but anyway guys I want to say a massive thank you as well for the love and support on YouTube I know you guys have been really really busy on the YouTube and you know <laughs> I, it's it's incredible to see you guys go because you know even recording this right now so I'm recording this on the the Tuesday after after I uploaded my uh, latest build which was the uh, huge damage sniper build and we're already at nearly a thousand views and 313 subscribers which honestly guys like I don't know what to say I'm I'm super super like it's it's just super heartwarming, guys. I'm like, I'm lost for words. So thank you so much. But guys, for now, though, um, I will see you in the next build. I hope you enjoyed this build. And uh, please let me know if there are any other builds or any other uh, kind of video ideas that you kind of want to see. Um, we are thinking about the like attachment videos. Uh, so that's something I'm kind of theorizing at the moment to go over some attachments. So if that is something you're interested in getting covered off, let me know and we'll see what we can do. In the meantime though, look after yourselves, look after each other, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out guys.